that David had to kill a lion, the bear and the Goliath. Lion, bear and the Goliath. This speaks of defeating three enemies that you have. Flesh, world and the devil. Flesh, world and the devil. Flesh is the thing that you have inside that wants to do bad. The way you overcome flesh is you feed your spirit, you feed your soul. The way you overcome flesh is you feed your soul. Means you feed your stuff with good stuff. That is how you overcome the flesh. Number two, the way you overcome the world is you flee the temptations. The flee temptations meaning you put yourself out from the situations and places and um, occurrences where you're going to be tempted. You know, if you walk in in the mall and Victoria who has no secrets looks at you, turn your head around. Especially if you're walking with a girl. Why? Because you're going to get a slap and stuff and then she's going to leave you alone. If you are walking, if you realize your friends are hanging out together and they're going to have alcohol there and you know and you're walking away from alcohol, you're walking away from that lifestyle as awesome as your friends are until you start leaving that life, until you start leaving those places, walking away from temptations, you are not going to overcome that sin. You don't overcome temptations but you don't overcome the world by simply going into places where you get tempted by and simply say well I'm gonna bring my Bible and preach to them about Jesus. You're gonna come with your Bible and walk out drunk. You're gonna walk in there with I'm gonna bring them to church and walk out high because there are places you and I are weak to go to witness. In those places, there are places online where some of us, some of us, that if we even come near to those sites, next thing that happens, we will slip and fall. And the goal is not, I'm just gonna, you know, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. No, no, I'm gonna walk away. My power is to walk away. God doesn't anoint me to fight. God anoints me to run. And see, God anoints me to fight the devil, but God anoints me to run from the world. See, Joseph, when he, when the Potiphar's wife was tempting Joseph and she started to flirt with him and the Bible says she did it continuously. Joseph did not go out to her and say, hey woman, can I pray for you right now? He didn't go lay hands on her. He didn't go try to witness to her because they would both go to hell. Joseph, the Bible says he ran from her. See, God anoints you only when you choose to run from temptations instead of fight temptations. Uh, a lot of times young men would come and they say things like, Pastor Vlad, pray for me Why I'm fighting with lust. And I said, that is your problem. He said, what do you mean? You're fighting with lust. I said, nowhere in the Bible God says to fight with lust. God says run from lust. I said, why are you fighting something God called you to run from? Lust? You can't beat lust. That's why God says run. You can beat the devil. That's why God says fight him. But lust is temptations. God says run. Means if that stuff pulls you down, don't try to get stronger to overcome it. Leave that. Delete that number. Well, he keeps texting. Change your number. Get a restraining order. Don't walk in that area. Change that. Delete them. Walk away from those things. Turn off the internet. Jesus without internet changed the world. You'll do just fine in the next few months. Well, you keep slipping into the stuff on Snapchat. Well, if you turn off your Snapchat, you will find out your high blood pressure will be just fine. If you will not have that social media, you will be just fine. But the Bible says it's better to go into heaven with one leg instead of, you know, going into hell, living in hell with your Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and every other social media, but having no peace. Run from temptations. And how do, we overcome, how do we overcome the devil is we actually have to fight the demons. We have to fight. You don't overcome the devil by running from the devil. See temptations, you run from them. The devil, you cannot run from the devil. Devil has to run from you. Listen, if you run from sin, you will have no fear to run from the devil. You will look at the devil and you will not be afraid of him. Why? Because you've been running from sin and now you have no fear of the devil. I remember when I was a, um, a lot younger person and the first time that I had to face demons alone in my car is when we were praying for one person on, on I think it was Thursday night. He was manifesting, manifesting, demons were manifesting through him. It was a, a little bigger guy and um, we prayed for him. He got free but he didn't get free completely. That means there were some demons left and so I had to drive him back home. There was only one problem. He lived about 25 minutes from here into like parts of Pasco over there off of road 68 where you go in there is no more lights there there's no reception there and it's dark so here is like 19 I'm about, I think it was about 19 years of age or 19 to 20 years of age and driving my dad's Toyota Corolla this guy is twice my size demons all the demons didn't leave he's driving we're driving there and as we are driving closer to his house he begins to kill himself right there in my car 
So he begins to choke himself. So there I am, I'm already scared. The guy's killing himself and I'm like, how am I going to explain? In my mind I'm thinking, okay, if he's going to kill himself, how am I going to explain to his parents that I didn't do it? I mean, imagine a Russian guy brings your child. He's like, really? I'm a youth pastor, uh huh? That's what all the MS says. You know, MS 13 says they're all youth pastors. Really? I mean, how am I gonna explain? I'm sitting there and I'm like, and there is no reception. I can't call police. I can't call my pastor. The guy, the demon took over and he begins to take, I think he took a pencil or something, and he's trying to choke himself and trying to stab himself. And there I am, literally faced with the devil in the car and no one to call. And I had to do what I was told to do with one hand hold the wheel with another hand hold hold his hand his hands were twice as powerful as mine and literally it wasn't the power of my hands but it was the power of the word I couldn't run from him I couldn't fight him and I remember putting my hand over his hands and I started to command the spirit of death I was scared there was no lights the, like not seeing lights on the streets kind of spooks me I was spooked and I remember simply seeing scared to death but saying you demon you're not gonna kill him you're gonna leave he will subside next morning I had to go pick him up again bring him to morning prayer and drive him to school I'm not exaggerating one part of the story we would pray here in the morning and I don't see him for like 30 seconds I run up and I see behind the pew under the pew he starts to kill himself because the demon would come on and try to kill him and right there nobody here and by myself a guy twice my size I had to learn that that day no matter how big that person is no matter how fierce the demon is and no matter how skinny I am small I am inexperienced I am demons will be subject to you but you have to know one thing you can't run from them the moment the devil sees that you're running you're already defeated even if you're scared stand your ground every hair on your back is picked up already and you're shaking stand your ground and don't let the devil see that you're afraid be afraid just inside of you let the devil see that you're a little snotty but you know what you're doing like David 15 year old coming against Goliath says I know who I am and I'm gonna take you down birds will eat you for lunch and I'm gonna destroy your whole army you think David felt that? David was scared just like you were. But see, when you have God living in you, you know you can't run from those devils. If some nightmares are tormenting you, you can't just escape from that. Get up and face that. And face that. If you're hearing voices, well, it's about time devil starts hearing your voice. If you hear nightmares, if you have attacks of the demons or stuff moving in your house, you get up, don't turn on the light you're the light tell the devil I am your light stop moving my chair you're not paying rent I am when you stop paying rent then move the chair move your own chair yeah I'm not making this up that's exactly what you have to tell the devil if he wants to move the chair he can go to hell and move all the chairs he wants to but this is your apartment this is your house and he has no right to be there come on somebody amen and so I want to challenge each one of you young person do not simply say well I am not a priest I am not a pastor I don't have this and everything listen do, do, that doesn't matter the Holy Spirit is in you and the Holy Spirit will use you if David could do it as a teenager you're 20 years old you're 25 years old you're 15 years of age that is enough you have to overcome the devil the Bible says stand your ground he will run stop running from the devil start running from sin most of us run into sin and run from the devil. The devil is a liar. That shouldn't be like that. Run from porn. Run from masturbation. Run from drugs. Run from alcohol. But stop running from demons. Let demons run when they see you walk into the room. Let them shake. Let them start hearing voices. Because every time you praise demons are like, ah, ah, voices, voices, voices. You've been letting the devil speak to you too much. And he silenced you. That's why during worship, don't just stand there, zip your lip, muzzle your mouth and... No, give devil a headache. Give him a nightmare, at least for once. Let him shake, shiver and, and be depressed. Especially when you don't feel like worshiping. Especially when it's a trauma and hell breaking loose with your parents at home. And you come in here, you're like, man, I'm just broken and shattered. And this is why demons just sit on you, sit on you. You get depressed, more depressed, more depressed and more suicidal. But you just, you just shake them up. And you begin to praise you begin to worship and the devil starts leaving saying you know what these people are crazy their voices 
I hear voices in my head I'm not making this up the Bible says God will silence the enemy through your praise it means he starts hearing voices and he will leave By the age of seven, we had stopped going to church and I just lived for myself, did my own thing. Growing up, I was overweight and I had a lot of insecurities, so I tended to do whatever uh, my friends did. It wasn't until I was 13 that I started uh, even considering the thought of God. My sister, she had just recently got saved at the time and all she could ever talk about was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and it annoyed me so much. I couldn't, couldn't stand being around her. None of the family could stand to be around her and she was always seen as the uh, outcast in the family. She was always inviting me to church but I never, I never decided to go. Then one, one day I remember, I remember clearly going to a, a rock concert with one of my, one of my friends and I remember during that time I ended up having a panic attack and when you're 13 years old and you have a panic attack and you don't know what's happening, you feel like you're going to die. And I remember I had to be pulled out of the mosh pit and when I was brought to the, to the edge of the stadium, the ambulance, they came and they, they checked out my vitals and ended up saying that everything was fine with me, that I just needed to rest. But in that moment I remember feeling like I was going to die and I remember the thought running through my mind that if I were to die today, that I didn't know Jesus Christ and that I would end up going to hell and not heaven. That scared me. That reality hit me at that moment. Um, and it scared me so bad to the point where I said to God, God, if you let me live this day, I will serve you with all of my life. I ended up coming down from that panic attack and everything was fine and life went on. It wasn't until a couple months later my sister invited me again to go to, to church, but this time it was an encounter retreat where they went away um, to the mountains. And I remember she asked me and I said no at first. And then it seemed like out of nowhere this thought came to my mind and, and I felt like it was God at that time. I didn't know it was God, but I was reminded of that promise that I made to God that I would follow Him with all of my life. I remember sitting at my friend's house. There was only an hour left till they would leave to go to the trip. I called my sister up and I said, wait for me, I'm gonna pack my bags and I'm going. And the very first night, worship began and I, I didn't know what anything was. I just, I just knew that people were singing songs. I knew that something in my heart needed a change. And I remember during worship, this peace coming over me so strong so, so powerful that I, that I couldn't resist but to sing along with the songs, to engage myself to the point where I was worshiping God and I hadn't even given my life to Him yet. I decided to give my life to Christ. Since then, my life has never been the same. I've been on a journey of growth and freedom, particularly in the area of uh, my purity. At the age of nine, I was introduced to pornography with my friend and from the time that I was nine to the time that I was about 17, I believe. I struggled severely with uh, this addiction to pornography and masturbation, and it controlled my life day to day. I tried to keep it hidden. I tried to not let anybody know about it. I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. How could somebody in the church who's been in the church for so long have this issue? It wasn't until I was 17 that I got fed up to the point where I didn't care about who knew what I had, about the skeletons in my closet, I decided that I wanted to live free. I wanted to live a life with God and purity and holiness. And my desire for holiness, my desire to follow after God was more than my desire to live in this sin. I remember going to Africa, receiving prayer through a prayer line similar to the one that we have here at Hungry Generation. And I was delivered mightily during that time from this spirit of pornography and masturbation, the spirit of lust, and what used to control my life, what I used to not be able to say no to, what used to day in and day out have control over my thoughts, my emotions, my, my body and my, my actions, everything I did, no longer had the grip that it had on my heart. When temptations came my way, I was able to say no. I was able to turn from them. I was no longer being hindered. I was no longer had this wall over my mind and over my thoughts when trying to pray, but it seemed like this veil had been lifted from my heart, this heaviness had been lifted from my heart, 
and I could serve God to the fullest and to the max. And now I find myself here in the church. I've been going to Hunger Generation faithfully for almost nine years, and I serve as a worship leader, and I'm a home group leader. I love what I do. I love helping people, and I just want to give God everything that I have. I want to be able to serve Him in the ways that I know how. My name is Bryson Still, and this is my testimony.